Because we adjusted our plans to add Hiroshima and Himeji to our travel itinerary, we were already short on time for Osaka, and we still wanted to visit Nara, so we had a lot to accomplish in a short amount of time. Come along with us as we spend a fun-filled day visiting three amazing locations. First stop, the Kaiyukan Aquarium. We're big fans of visiting aquariums. Kaiyukan, situated in Tompozan Harbor Village, a waterfront district in Osaka, is one of the largest public aquariums in the world. So for us, it was a must-see. General admission to the aquarium is 2,700 yen, or roughly 18 euros. It's important to mention that the aquarium emphasizes education and conservation efforts. It aims to raise awareness about marine ecosystems and the importance of protecting oceanic environments. The aquarium features many different exhibits. You start by walking through the Aqua Gate, a sort of underwater tunnel that leads you into the heart of the aquarium. From there, you'll see all sorts of animals in marine life, from sea otters to penguins, freshwater and saltwater tanks, rivers and ocean exhibits, and even some super interesting deep sea creatures. It was here we got our first real taste of the spring break crowds in Japan. Despite visiting first thing on a Sunday morning, it was very crowded. Oh, hello. The centerpiece of this aquarium is the massive Pacific Ocean tank. This tank is one of the largest single pane acrylic glass aquariums in the world. It holds 5,400 tons of water and is a home to a variety of marine species, including whale sharks, manta rays, and other large fish. They even had Tori's favorite, the hammerhead shark. There was also a really interesting Arctic section. This darkened ice-themed area had several smaller tanks. At the center of the ceiling, you could look up to observe these cheeky leopard seals playing about. hours here and overall enjoyed the experience. However, we have to share a few criticisms regarding the aquarium. Some of the tanks seem to be a bit too small for some of the animals and we're not fans of seeing dolphins in captivity, especially in small tanks. From the aquarium, we headed to our second stop of the day, Nara. The trip took around an hour by train with one transfer. After arriving in Nara, it's quite easy to find your way. There's a main street that leads you through the city to Nara Park. There are tons of restaurants and shops along the way. stop at a restaurant and information center called Narnacle and have some lunch before going to see the deer. This place isn't traditional Japanese food, but it was delicious. <laughs> After lunch, we continued on to Nara Park. This park is quite large and if you enter on the south side as we did, it's not super apparent where to go to find the senbai crackers that you can give to the deer. 
If you walk a bit more towards the north, you will find different sellers that have the deer crackers for 200 yen per pack. As you get closer to Todaiji Temple, it will be very easy to locate the crackers. Our tip, walk through the southern part of the park to interact with the deer, it's much less crowded. And remember, these deer are wild animals. Be respectful so neither you nor the animals get hurt. It's also very important to only feed them the senbei crackers that are sold at the park. <laughs> He's like, oh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> and the other half? <laughs> you have to share. You have to be kind. Sharing is caring, little one. Can I have one, please? Well, that one went away. You can give it to this one. She's now in my pocket. Hold on. No, no touchy. No touchy. Bow. No. No. <laughs> 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 you go, other friend. Oh, so gentle. Can I pet you? Is it okay? Hello. Hi. Am I going to be able to get out of this circle? It's a circle of crackers. Oh, good girl. Nice job. You're so cute. You know there's something more in my pocket? Okay. Nope, your cord. <laughs> We heard from several sources that the deer will bow when you give them crackers. While we encountered a couple animals that were trained in this behavior, the majority of them were not. So when you bow to the deer, they more often than not just give you a strange look or try to stick their nose in your pocket to get at some more crackers. At the north side of the park, you find Todaiji, a large Buddhist temple complex. To get there, you'll pass through the Todaiji Grand South Gate. You'll queue outside the central gate to purchase tickets and enter the courtyard. Entrance to visit the Great Buddha Hall is 600 yen. As you enter the hall, you are greeted by a 15 meter tall bronze Buddha statue representing Vairokana and is flanked by two bodhisattvas. You are directed to walk clockwise around the hall where you'll find many other statues and pieces of art as well as food and souvenir vendors. Once you get over how large the statue is, have a look around to appreciate how large this hall is. 
This hall, until recently, held the record as the world's largest wooden building. It is absolutely massive and it's not even the original size. It's been rebuilt twice due to fires. After the last reconstruction in 1692, it's 30% smaller than the original. The statues and artwork here are absolutely stunning. If you visit Nara to see the deer, make sure to also take the time to visit Todaiji. On the way back to the train station, Tori stopped to purchase some melon bread. This light and fluffy bread roll was one of her favorite foods from the trip, particularly the crunch almond flavor. Hi, uh, plain and crunch almond. When we returned back to Nara, we took a break at our hotel before heading out again. We stayed at the Hotel Monterey Le Frere, which was very close to Osaka Station. In fact, you could walk most of the way there via the underground passageways. Our stay there was very nice and the views from our room were amazing. We were exhausted from the day, but we couldn't leave Osaka without seeing Datambori. This district is well known for its lively atmosphere and dazzling neon lights. The streets are lined with restaurants, food stalls, shops, and entertainment complexes. Square, kind of. yeah. We arrived just as a kabuki performance at the Shakakuza Theater was letting out, so the place was slammed with people, which really added to the intense, almost chaotic atmosphere. We wandered up and down the streets, taking in all the incredible signage. And we just had to see the famous Datambori Don Quixote with a Ferris wheel built into the front of the building. It was so crowded inside, you could barely move. After we found some dinner, we made our way back to the hotel to do some laundry and rest up for the start of the theme park portion of our trip. Join us next time as we move to the other side of the city for two super fun days at Universal Studios Japan. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider clicking that like button and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on our next adventure.